It's something that no one anticipated. It was the Beatles of footwear because it changed everything. In an instant, it became a playground must-have. All by itself, it transformed the essence of urban fashion. Money's got to be the shoe. Shoe, 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 shoe. The whole marketing of the Air Jordan line was predicated on the style and the class and the competence and capability and the performance that Michael Jordan brought to the basketball court. There's a kaboom. <laughs> when they first came out, I mean, it, it, was, it was so hot, everybody had to get it pair, me included. The Air Jordan's initial design, a red and black two-color scheme, was illegal by NBA standards. Yet Nike's first ads in the spring of 1985 made it sound as though the shoe had been banned for giving an unfair advantage to a luminous new star. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. When the Air Jordan was banned, Michael Jordan's new image was born. Hip, charismatic, transcendent. Oh! 450,000 pairs of Air Jordans were sold in the first month. That's when stores, you know, were opening up at midnight because the lines were around the corner. No shoe really had that. No shoe. With success came controversy. The first Air Jordans cost $65 a pair. Later models hit the three-figure mark. Critics attacked Nike for pricing Air Jordans out of the reach of the lower-income kids who'd crave them the most. $135, $145, $185 for a pair of gym shoes, for a pair of sneakers. We've got a lot of young kids out in the south side and west sides of Chicago who really shouldn't be buying $150 sneakers because uh, they should be spending a little bit of that money on books. I think they have problems because people do what they need to do to get the money or steal that stuff, which, which is being hawked at them. And there were problems. In Maryland and Texas, teens were killed by thugs who were after their Jordans. The tragedies that took place between kids, killings, assaults over clothing, as well as shoes, was an indication of what we had taught as a culture. Wearing the right clothes, identifying with the right uh, image, uh, became their sole hook and handle on their own personal self-esteem. Air Jordans anticipated the cultural dominance of hip-hop swaggering materialism. They became the ideal evening dress wear for the street-smart young urban man and the suburban teen or baby boomer who wanted a taste of Jordan's electrifyingly luxe style. There are certain movies and certain cars that are uh, unique and they kind of start trends and start things. That's an Air Jordan. It's a trend starter. As much as you want to wear those on the basketball floor, you want to wear those to school, you want to wear them to functions. I've had numerous, I have a closet full of Jordans. And um, I think the, the, the ones I liked the best was the patent leather. Those were crazy, I used to wear them in suits. For basketball players, they felt as if they got a pair of Air Jordans, they can go out there and, and play like them. And for guys or girls who didn't play basketball, they still thought if they got the, the Air Jordans on, they would be as important as, say, a Michael Jordan. You know how I get up for my game? Do you know, do you know, do you know? That's right, Air Jordan, Air Jordan, Air Jordan. I think what Michael and Nike were able to accomplish was to mainstream uh, sports apparel into everyday apparel and make it a fashion statement. People get it, they get it. They, they feel uh, that they are, they are purchasing a part of Michael Jordan and, and the greatness that surrounds him. Here's Michael at the foul line, a shot on Elo, good! The Bulls win! People all over the world know about those shoes, and people all over the world, some of them don't know how to play basketball or even know, you know about the game of basketball, but they wear those shoes. They also make the shoes. Jordan sloughed off criticism from activists 
who said his sneakers were being made overseas by exploited workers, earning less than a living wage. Last year, Jordan countered those claims by visiting an Asian shoe factory. I saw a commitment to try to improve an environment. It's easy to compare that to the United States, and, and I think that's somewhat unfair, and, and, and I think you have to compare it to what was happening within that country. Yes, the Air Jordan caught some cultural waves. The growing influence of the inner city on fashion, the pricey aesthetic of the rap movement, the graying boomers' lust for eternal youth and grace. But let's face it, they were cool. And so was the man whose name and soaring figure adorned every pair. Two decades later, their synergy stands in history. Michael's legacy and impact on his culture, from the marketing, shoe, celebrity, business side of it, is going to outlast and have more enduring impact than what he did on the court because what he did on the court was absolutely, literally, unbelievable. We just enjoy the moment and feel that we've made an impact on, on society as well as the sport industry and fashion, and, and I think that drives us.